It's amazing. The broadcast industry has spent years developing high definition video and yet I can't tell you on how many jobs I've been asked to take video footage and give it an old television style treatment. You know, scan lines, noise, a little white bar moving up and down the screen, maybe even some saturation adjustment. Now, there are plugins that create this effect, and they do it with only a few clicks, but I find they make After Effects run really slowly, and they don't give you nearly as much control as if you do it by hand. Also, plugins cost money, and, <laughs> well, my way is free. So put your pocketbooks away, and prepare to set the broadcast industry back a few decades. Okay, so here I have some footage of New York City traffic. Let's create a new composition the same size and length as my footage by dropping the footage directly on the Create New Composition button here in the project window. Now that my footage is in there, the first thing I want to do is add that annoying white strobing line I mentioned. To do that, let's create a solid the same size as my composition. Go to Layer, New, Solid, make the solid the same size as my composition, and then click on the color box and choose white as the color for our solid. Next, let's add a rectangular mask that goes the whole width of the layer, but maybe only 20 to 30 percent of the height. I'm going to select the rectangular mask tool and then drag click across the screen. Don't worry if your mask goes outside the border of our white solid. It's perfectly fine if it does. Next, making sure that your solid layer is selected in the timeline, hit F to reveal the mask's feather property. That's the property that determines how blurry it is at the edges of the mask. Let's turn off the Constrain Proportion switch here and then set the Y feathering to about, I don't know, say 50. That seems pretty good. This will create a nice blurry edge to our strobing line, which at this point isn't actually strobing yet. So let's do that next. Now, there are several schools of thought on getting After Effects layers to blink on and off. The first is the effect called Strobe Light, which you can find under Effect, Stylize, Strobe Light. Now I'm not going to waste time on it because there's nothing this effect can do that others can't with a few well-placed keyframes. More importantly, the effect works based on time, not on frames. So you actually have to do some math to figure out how to break down a second by percentages to control how often things blink on and off. It's not fun and it often doesn't work the way you want it to. So let's skip that. You could also set repeating hold keyframes of 0% and 100% opacity over and over again. If you have nothing better to do until your favorite reality TV show comes on, that might be a good way to kill time, but it's not a great way to work. And frankly, why are you wasting your time with reality TV anyway? It's not like it's any good. I mean, it's bad enough I have to deal with obnoxious people all day. Why would I want to spend even more time watching them try to win money by eating live insects or doing their best to get their opponents fired? These people are ruining television. Jeez. <clears throat> but I digress. Another, and in my opinion, best way to get a layer to strobe is to use only a few keyframes and then loop them with an expression. Now, if you've never used expressions, it may sound complicated, but it's actually really easy to do. First, at frame zero, set an opacity keyframe of 20%. I don't want the bar to ever be all that visible, so 20% is a good number to keep it subtle. Right-click on the keyframe, and from the pop-up, choose Toggle Hold Keyframe. This creates a keyframe that will not change its value until the next keyframe comes up. There will be no interpolation between this keyframe and the next. It'll just change instantly. Move down in the timeline to frame 2. That's two frames down from frame 0, by the way, not the actual second frame. And then set a new keyframe with an opacity value of 0%. You'll notice that it's automatically created as a hold keyframe. After Effects assumes that any keyframe set after a hold keyframe should also be a hold keyframe, which works fine for us, but which can be a bit of a pain in other situations, so be careful of that. Now, move down two more frames to frame 4 and set another opacity keyframe with a value of 20%. Now for the expression. Alt-click on the opacity stopwatch over here, which as you can see adds an expression that says opacity. This simply means opacity equals opacity. In other words, don't do anything to the opacity values. Just use the keyframe information and leave it alone. What we need to do here is actually convince After Effects to repeat or cycle our keyframes over and over again. And for that to happen, we have to create a new expression. Highlight the text in the expression field and then type in the expression you're seeing here on your screen. This expression simply means after the last keyframe loop all keyframes with the looping method called cycle. 
There are actually three other looping methods, but I'm not going to get into them in this tutorial. If you twirl down the opacity property to see its graphs, you won't see any indication of repeating values. For that, click on this button here to see the expression graph. Once you do that, you'll see a red graph that shows us that our keyframes are being repeated. Now, just for some extra oomph, I'm going to set the layer's transfer or blending mode to add instead of the default normal mode. I just like the way it looks. Before we can move on, we need to do one more thing with our white bar, and that's get it to move down the screen over and over again. Want to take three guesses as to how we're going to do that? Once again, we need to call on our old pal expressions. Making sure that our white bar layer is selected, hit P to reveal the position property. Then, in the comp window, move the white bar all the way past the top of our footage, and set a position keyframe. Next, move down two full seconds in the timeline and move it past the bottom of our footage. You'll notice that a new keyframe is automatically created. Once again, let's add the exact same expression we use for opacity here in the position property. Now you may have noticed that in this case I only set two keyframes, whereas in the opacity property I set three. Good eye if you did. It's been my experience that certain keyframe types, like hold keyframes, require at least three keyframes for the cycle expression to work, while others, like linear keyframes, require only two. And it's a little more complicated than that depending on what property you're cycling and even what kind of footage you're using. While I have some theories as to why all of this happens, they're just guesses at best. So I'm going to stay out of trouble and leave this one to the expression experts and move on. If you do a quick RAM preview, you'll see that our annoying white bar is doing what it should be doing, so we're done with this. Believe it or not, that was the hardest step in our project. The next thing that we want to do is add some noise in. Rather than adding it in directly to the footage, let's create a new solid the same size as our composition, and also let's make it black. This will leave us with a black screen for now. Oh, make sure to move the black solid to the first frame in the timeline if it's not already there. Next, let's add the effect called Noise. You'll find it under Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise. Right now, even though we added the Noise effect, you should still see nothing but a black solid on your screen. By default, the Noise effect actually shows no noise. To change that, just get into the Effects controls and set the Amount of Noise property to 100%. Since we want to be able to see our footage through the noise, let's do two things. The first is set the layer's transparency to about 40%. The second is to change the noise layer's blending mode from normal to screen. There are other solid color and transfer mode options you can try for different effects, but for now I'm sticking with this one. One last thing. This is more of a preference than anything else, but I like my noise a lot bigger than one pixel, so I'm going to scale my noise layer up to 500%. It looks dirty, but that's fine since this is, after all, supposed to be interference on a TV screen, right? And besides, we're not done yet. Do a quick RAM preview, and you should have some nice dirty noise added to the footage. Next, let's add in the scan lines. I'm going to use the grid effect to do this. First, let's add a new solid the same size as our composition. It really doesn't matter what color it is, so just go for it. Next, add the grid effect found under Effect, Render, Grid. Now obviously we're going to have to make a few changes to get this from being a white grid to something that resembles black television scan lines. First things first. Change the color property to black by clicking on the color box and choosing black from the gradient. Next, let's tell the effect to take its size from the width and height sliders. Sliders which will only become visible if we choose this option. And there they are. We'll get back to them in a moment. Next, let's move the effects anchor all the way to the side of the comp. Then, go back to the width slider and slide it up as high as it goes. As you can see, it stops at 200, meaning that the grid repeats the vertical lines every 200 pixels. We need it to go higher than that, so we'll just have to enter the value manually. Just click on the value and set it to something larger than the composition size so we don't see the next vertical line. I'll just go with 1000, which leaves us a good safety margin. Next, set the height to a value of 6, which repeats the horizontal lines every 6 pixels. Next, set the border size to a value of 6 also. This controls the thickness of the grid lines. Finally, set the feathering to a value of 4. This feathers the grid lines, making the edges transparent. If you do a quick RAM preview, you'll see our scene looking more and more like a TV with bad reception. 
Okay, so far so good. Just a few more touches and we're good to go. One thing I sometimes like to do is play with the color of my footage. There are a bunch of color effects that you can use, but why don't we play with the color balance effect for now. Select the footage layer and choose Effect, Adjust, Color Balance. In the effect controls, set the midtone red balance to a value of 100. Another RAM preview and we have something looking very 70s. Not bad. Next, we're going to make the TV screen shape. Let's nest this composition into a new comp. In our new composition, let's create a new solid. You might want to pick a brighter color since it'll be easier to work with, but in the end it really won't matter what color it is. What is important is that you make the solid a perfect square. I'll go with 480 by 480, the height of my comp used for both the width and the height. Next, with my solid layer still selected, let's create a perfect square shaped mask by double clicking on the rectangular mask tool. Hit M to reveal the mask shape property and click on this property's stopwatch to set a keyframe. Next, move down to about 2 seconds in the timeline and making sure that you have the mask shape property selected, switch from the rectangular mask tool to the elliptical mask tool. Double click on it and the mask now becomes a perfect circle and a keyframe for mask shape has also been created there. If you scroll through time now, you'll see that the mask's shape morphs over time, but it isn't anything that we can use as a TV screen shape. The mask's vertex points aren't aligned correctly for this to work, so let's fix that. Go back to the second keyframe, you know, the one where the mask is a circular shape, and in the comp window, double click on the mask shape to reveal the bounding box. If you move the mouse outside the mask's bounding box, you'll see the rotation tool, which we'll use to rotate the circular mask counterclockwise 45 degrees. Hold down the shift button while you do it and it'll snap to a perfect 45 degrees. Hit enter to exit the bounding box. Now if you scroll through time, you'll see that the mask is doing a nice undistorted interpolation, but the shape is too square-like to be a TV. Here's the trick. Select the solid layer and go to Layer solid settings. Make the layer the same size as the composition. Now check out the shape as it morphs. It's looking a lot more like a TV set, right? Especially around the one second mark. Move to about one second in the timeline and then click on the mask shape stopwatch, which gets rid of the keyframes but keeps the current value. In our case, the shape we want to use. Now let's scale down the solid layer to about 88% so that the shape fits into the action safe area of our composition. Finally, let's set our nested comp, the TV footage, to use the TV screen shape layer as an alpha mat. A RAM preview shows me that this thing looks pretty good, but I'm going to do one more thing for bonus points. Let's give the TV a glare that shows it's got a rounded tube and not a modern flat screen. Let's duplicate our mat layer and go into the solid settings and make it white. Normally you'd want to be wary of this option here called affect all layers that use this solid, but in our case it really doesn't make a difference. Now make the solid visible by clicking on its eyeball switch and make sure this new solid layer is selected. Next, select the layer mask's lower right corner vertex and drag it close to the upper left corner. I know it looks a mess right now, but hang in there. Now activate the convert vertex tool and then convert both the upper right and lower left corners to have hard edges. Next, let's feather the mask with a value of about 30. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And then set the layer's opacity to 50%. Finally, set the layer's blending mode to add. Not bad if I do say so myself. You know, it kind of reminds me of like one of the opening shots you'd see in a 70s sitcom. I'll catch you folks in the next one. This Creative Cow training video was filmed in front of a live studio audience.